Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this episode, I want to talk about landscape photography. What started me off on my professional photography career is shooting landscapes, and I've got 10 tips for you on how to improve or get started on taking amazing landscape images. Now my first tip would be lighting. You might start off with chasing sunsets and then chasing sunrise. Depends on if you are willing to get up at that ungodly hour in the summertime. But lighting is, is crucial. Moonlight is another source of lighting that can just transform and add so much depth to night photography. I shared this in my last video uh, for winter photography or for landscapes in, in wintertime. When the moon is out, it just illuminates all that snow and you don't even need headlamps, you can see everything. Uh, but it doesn't have to be, you know, snowscapes. It can be even just a moonrise. I took a photo of a moon over some of the islands here and it shows the ocean kind of inlaid in between. And uh, without that moon, it, I mean, it's a beautiful view. The, the, but the moon is just draws you in and it creates incredible lighting, uh, reflection off the water sort of thing. Uh, fog is another thing that I guess if it's a gray day, the fog could still add so much to an image, um, creating mood and, and, uh, and like soft texture. But if you can go closer to the ocean uh, and get it so that the sun is out, but you still got uh, fog rolling off the ocean. You can get these rays of uh, these sunbeams where the sun is illuminating the fog that's blowing in off the ocean. I was on a hike with my wife. We did the Juan Fuca Trail and we're in our, we have our backpacks and everything and we had to do I think it's 77 kilometers is the hike. No, 47 kilometers is the hike. So as we're walking up from camping down on the beach, uh, I noticed there was a ton of fog, but it was forecast for blue skies. And I think August or foggiest as they call it, um, is where you're gonna get um, fog coming off the ocean, but blue skies and, and lots of sun. And so I did a shoot, um, and, it's, and it was awesome. Uh, you got these sun rays coming in. And those are the elements that are gonna elevate your image to a whole other level. And that photo ended up being on front covers of magazines. Yeah, I've, I've been super blessed with that. So even just up here in this uh, field um, where I was walking down through, uh, sunset uh, took a wild and amazing turn and it was really kind of a cloudy day and the sun came out and it just lit up everything and I had some low-lying fog because it was uh, springtime and there's a lot of moisture especially on the ground and there's warmer temperature so with the cool ground and and you know even some snow and stuff in the warmer air you're gonna get some low-lying fog and then we had the sun that uh, was reflecting and lighting up all the clouds now Keep in mind that without amazing sunsets, you have to have clouds. If not, you just get, you know, a beautiful twilight, nice, um, you know, golden sky, that sort of thing. But I find uh, clouds can really just bring so much uh, more to an image. It's feeling, uh, bring more depth to it instead of just a blank sky. Uh, but here's a photo that I took uh, where the moss on the tree, the root structure, its, its branches, um, we're just just unreal and I think if I didn't have it was raining it was pouring that day and then the Sun broke out and we were by a river and uh, I saw the Sun coming down kind of through this valley um, onto the moss on the tree and it just kind of gave it so much highlights and and I shot towards the Sun I made sure that the Sun wasn't fully ex you know exposed 
through the through the branches. I kind of hit it behind some of the branches um, and gave me a bit of a sun flare. Uh, but that lighting just transformed that tree. Without that, it would fall flat. I mean, the tree's still pretty cool, but that sunlight really just gave it that. So my next tip for landscape photography is low angles. And where I'm standing at right now is what we all see. We walk around daily standing or sitting. I'm talking about really low to the ground. Uh, sometimes right at water surface and I've got a few examples here that just make the world of a difference just even from one foot lower than maybe what you're typical uh, to doing when you're photographing. One image in particular is uh, a shot that I did um, up at a waterfall here on Vancouver Island and the rocks were smooth river stone rocks but what was more you know, interesting to me was the bubbles that the waterfall was creating. And with the current and the flow, it kind of circu circled around, kind of creating an eddy. And I took some photos at a higher angle, um, kind of standing five feet-ish um, on the tripod. Those were pretty cool, but I wanted to get the rocks in this really cool, sort of scratch record flat disc where it has the lines look so um, I laid out my tripod and I got really low angles. Another one is up at Emerald Lake. This is in British Columbia close to the Rockies or in the Rockies and again the uh, underwater uh, stone and the, and the colors and there's even a, I believe a, there's a log there I wanted to gather all of that and, and kind of have the viewer um, kind of walk through the scene. If I just shot it from height level, I think the, the emphasis or the look would just be on the cabin, but showcasing the lake and the rocks and the stones, the warmer colors, all the way to the emerald colors, I think really just made this, this uh, image come alive. Now one technique, with some of the lower angle shots that I've showed with you that have reflection like water, you're gonna need another piece of equipment to remove that reflection, which is a polarizer. I won't get too much into uh, polarizing uh, and, and all the different filters, ND, uh, soft grad filters. I think I'll do another uh, video, YouTube video, uh, for you on that, uh, but that is one piece of equipment that I would uh, recommend if you're going to be doing low angle at water level. Now the next shot I have titled as perspective and I think this one's very important uh, for the fact that we see everything on the same plane day in day out and I've talked about this a few times already but looking up to the sky is maybe an interesting perspective that shows a different story that someone in their day-to-day -day life doesn't see. So I was on, uh, I think, one of the islands in Hawaii, and you got these really cool trees with the bark, and I was just like, wow, I just love laying in my hammock looking up at the sky. And so I grabbed my camera, I noticed that there was a flight path where planes were going up and overhead, you could probably hear a plane right now, it's a float plane. Maybe I can do it here. But in the image, there's sort of a path or a little snake uh, of opening sky and that plane kind of flew into the, the center of it and I've, I captured that. It took a little while, um, but I know the plane is a bit cheesy. I think it really brought the image together. I could just remove it, uh, but that is a different perspective that I think is pretty cool. So not only just looking up creates a different perspective, uh, but looking down, maybe not like we are right now, this might be more for macro, if you're looking at bugs and that sort of thing. But if you were in a plane, if you're on a mountaintop, a helicopter, your perspective changes and you can capture some stunning images that you can only see from the sky that people like you and me don't see day to day. And so here's some images that I took from a higher perspective. There's one 
at Tofino. This is uh, where the surf comes in. It's a kind of a well-known famous spot here in Canada to catch some waves. And from this viewpoint, you can see the mountains far off into the background. Uh, you can see the different ocean and waterways. There's islands there. And then of course, there's this huge bay in front with the waves coming into the, to the beach. And from that perspective, it just gives you this vast landscape that's, that's beautiful. And then there's even foreground elements uh, of, the, of the trees um, being bent and moved by the wind. Um, so a higher perspective is, is a cool shot. Many of you, I'm sure, have been to a lookout and that's how you've taken photos. But think about the foreground, think about what's in the middle and where your eyes are moving through. Another one is fog blowing around. And uh, this one I actually took from a view top as well. And I took it with a telephoto lens. It was a 500 millimeter, 200 to 500 f 5.6 lens. And there was a sailboat. And as the, the clouds and the fog kind of broke, I seen that sailboat making its way through the, the ocean, zoomed in, took that photo. So one, the, the perspective from above was very important. And then two, which I talked about a little bit, uh, the camera equipment that I used was a telephoto and this one I truly love. Do you have a drone? Maybe you're thinking about getting a drone, uh, but drones offer another perspective. Now, for some people, the perspective is very annoying. Uh, their privacy and everything has been thrown out the door. But we're talking about beautiful landscapes, uh, areas where you're not disrupting either people, birds, especially birds that are nesting. So make sure that you've followed up on your rules, um, you know, that, that you're not disrupting wildlife around you. But the perspective from a drone is I think so cool that I don't have to like rent a Cessna and a pilot to go ahead and fly to these locations which are super no noisy. They have fossil fuels, all of that, right? I can just pop the drone up and take a really cool perspective shot. And this is one that I took um, where I was four by four, fouring through the woods, looking at giant trees that we grow here, that we grow, that grow here on Vancouver Island. And I noticed a stunning river down in this canyon. And I thought, you know what, how am I gonna take, take a photo of this? Well, pop up the drone and see what it looks like. I knew from a topographical map that the, the river kind of winds through and, and I knew that there would be some cool shapes and, and movement. It's, it wasn't like a straight line that you would see um, through a field or something. Uh, this was moving through a natural canyon, carving out of rocks, that sort of thing. And you had this bridge kind of going at an angle. So I flew the drone up, twisted it to give a really cool composition and uh, took some photos there. My next big tip is telling a story. I know that sounds a bit generic and everyone's trying to tell a story by taking a photo and putting it up on social media and saying, hey, this is what I did, this is what I've seen. But what I mean by that is setting up a photo that fills in the whole story, something that you don't have to explain or say, this is Venice, this is where I'm at. So I was in Venice for a few days and Venice is known for romance, love, and then there's the gondola rides. So I, I set up to an area that I knew there was going to be gondola riders coming through the canal. And the composition, the buildings, the houses, the people's homes, uh, and the lighting, everything looked perfect except for that one element where a gondola ride was going to come through. Um, in the in the twilight in the evening at nighttime So I went back to that location set up my tripod got everything ready now. This image is a composite so there's more than one shot and It took all evening to get this one shot And I love it. It tells a story. There's there's a couple that's uh, taking a romantic ride through Venice You got the stars you got the building now the stars were difficult because the light pollution long exposure, denoise, there's a few elements to it. 
But this tells a story, right? This next image, uh, we were in Portugal, traveling along the coast there, and uh, this is in Nazare, so it's known for the world's highest waves surfed, uh, coastal, coastal waves. I think over 100 feet, uh, foot wave being surfed. Anyways, it's just amazing. So we were up there. I'm using one of the other tips, perspective, a higher angle, as well as uh, this tip, telling a story. And we, there's a lot of coastal people fishing just right on the beach into the crazy ocean that's got tons of waves, current. I mean, they know what they're doing. This guy's out there. We watched him for a while fishing and waves never caught him. Some of the waves you can even see the water actually passed him on the beach. And so I think he's in an area where he knew that some of the breaks were further out uh, and he was out there fishing. And I think this one really tells the story of uh, the, the stormy waves, this one guy out there fishing and the lighting and the color is just, everything kind of came together. So now something that my wife and I love to do is camp a lot. And I love uh, sharing a story with my camping adventures. Here's a tent that we illuminated right up by the cliff. And we got the Milky Way there. And this whole thing kind of just shows this kind of romantic, under the stars, remote, adventurous scene. Now my last tip is having an S shape or angles or leading lines in your landscape uh, images. This can help a viewer take a look at your photo and not only just pick out your subject but wind their way through the image, kind of soak it all in, see all the different details and a lot of the other elements that we talked about, perspective, lighting, low angles, telling a story, all of those can, can work together by your composition and how you display that image for the scene that you might be in. Here's a photograph of a train in the Rockies and you got that S-curve. I camped out at this location, um, out in the snow, because it was the first snowfall. Um, I was really excited to get a southbound train, which is very difficult to do, because most of them are going northbound, so for every northbound train, I think it's 10 northbound and one southbound. And you might not even get a southbound train all day. Um, but this, what is very important in, in this valley is the shape that the train kind of makes with all of its trailing cars, or carts, um, is an S shape in this valley. And you got the mountains kind of creating angles and V shapes. Going back to this image where the fog is coming off the ocean, uh, you'll notice that there's leading lines here as well. I position the camera so that you can see the trail on the right hand side before Haley has walked through it. And then the sun and the rays of light are leading lines down to where she is hiking. So your eyes wander through whether it's, it would first go straight to where Haley is in her backpack and uh, you take a look at her on her adventure, it's telling a story, but then your eyes would wander up to the sun and the rays of light round the image and the pathway also shows where she has come and where she's going through the image. And, and it becomes a very compelling image instead of just photographing a straight line to the back of Haley. I also had her angle a little bit showing the direction and where she is hiking, which is also can be very important. 
and I haven't really talked too much about the gear so I wanted to quickly touch base on the gear because I think the gear is, is really just a whole other video that we can chat about and you can leave me questions and stuff down in the comments and I would love to jump on that and see whether or not you guys are interested in that and maybe what you use for equipment. For landscape photography a lot of people think wide angle, uh, you're capturing a vast landscape and a lot of the times that, that might be true uh, and for that I use a 14 to 24 f 2.8 lens. This is made by Nikon, it's a Nikkor lens. For that in between, uh, the 24 to 70 is my next lens of choice. This is probably the most used out of the three lenses I'm going to show, show you. Uh, that's because at 24 it's fairly wide and at 70 it kind of gives you a little bit more of that compression you can zoom in so uh, this is kind of the in-between the safe lens uh, this one's also uh, a 2.8 and the last lens that I've got that I want to share with you is the 70 to 200 and this one's a 2.8 as well again all three of these lenses are referred to as the holy trinity of lenses they're all 2.8 uh, and it covers from 14 mils all the way up to 200. So I did this video in two parts, mostly because there's so many examples and when we're referring to a tip like lighting, um, it's not just the sun, sunrise or the sunset that we're talking about. So stick around for the second part that I'm hoping to get released in a few weeks. Uh, another thing I wanted to share is that some of the images that I really love in landscape photography are done with a telephoto lens. I shared the 70 to 200 and sometimes that I use that in landscape images. But here's a uh, 500 that I've even used for some shots and I'll throw some examples up on the screen. Um, but this right here is primarily for my wildlife but there's been times where I've looked up into the mountains um, and seen a, a beautiful uh, mountain peak with snow blowing um, or it's a lighthouse way off in the distance and it gives me some great compression. Now not only not always do I take this in the field, especially if I'm on a canoe or a kayak, and I still want to get that telephoto uh, compression, I'll bring out this 200 to 500. It's a fairly inexpensive lens compared to this one, and uh, this gives me up to 500 mils in reach as well. If you love this content, please give me a thumbs up. Um, really helps out the channel, pushes this onto other people. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I've got a few other videos which will pop up here in a moment. So check out those other videos. Uh, comment if you have any questions. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.